definitely valid points. Um, yeah. So our next question, uh, do you feel unique or different being Indian in the U.S. Army? Um, yeah, this was also a big thing. So I, I when I went in, I was surprised. There was actually no Indians in my platoon. Um, no one in my company, actually. We had uh, around five companies in total. And um, Alpha Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo. And I was an Echo. And the company itself is made up around 100, 120 people. And not a single Indian was in our company. And a lot of people actually thought I was Mexican or Hispanic um, because, you know, I am brown. So, but I had to correct them. You know, I had to be like, no, I'm Indian. And it, it was definitely a unique experience. But honestly, no one really, no one really makes like looks at that any, anything in the army. In the army, it's like you wear the uniform. It's the same uniform. You're all in like green, right? So everyone just looks past all of those differences and, and you just work as a team. Um, I did see another um, a sick uh, at another company. I saw it because he was wearing a turban. So I was like, finally, you know, I, I find someone I can see at least across the road. You know, I'm like, okay, that's a sick in the army, um, which was really great to see. But in the end, it didn't really matter too much. Um, and it was fun because I shared my experience being an Indian and, you know, all the uh, Indian food and everything that everyone else was kind of missing out on. I would show them. So which was pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we got a couple more questions in the chat, but before we go to that, um, go to that, uh, Sporty, Aditi, and Gaurav, do you guys have any questions? Uh, I do have a question. Um, what motivated you to join the military in the first place? So I've actually wanted to join some type of service um, when I was, uh, you know, back in middle school or high school, just because, I mean, I grew up watching all these, uh, the spy movies, you know, Mission Impossible, James Bond. And now I was like, I, I want to be like that. And then I realized that's not really how it works, right? In, in real life, that's not how it works. But intelligence, especially military intelligence and intel fields are like really close to um, doing that kind of work where you're analyzing enemy threats and everything. So I found that really interesting where I was like, you know, this path might be something that I'm interested in as a kid watching all these movies. And the army felt really um, beneficial and efficient way to get through college and school and get that paid for while also trying to go through this kind of um, career to get down the road with the intel. So uh, that, that's why I chose Army specifically. Um, uh, I, I would have, you know, Air Force works and everything works, but the Army is also a little bit more challenging with their training. And uh, I, like I said, when I was in high school and I got through, you know, the, the fitness world of things and all my friends were working out and I got into that too. I really like that, you know, challenging aspect of it. So I joined the army for that reason. Yes, Purthi and Gaurav, do you guys have any questions? Yeah, I actually do. So I'm pretty sure that in the army, you would have made some good friends and gotten pretty close to them. So do you have any memorable or funny experiences to share? Uh, so yeah, we're right. We, we got really close and the army is really good at doing this. They make you really close to everyone. And then they just break you up. Cause like in training 10 weeks, uh, it, it felt like I basically made a new whole family. Cause we would share a barracks, you know, with our own platoon, which was around like 20 guys. And, and we would all be sharing the same barracks and, and you'd live with each other every single day. And it, it, and with, with guys, it's a little funny. You, you actually start out as best friends. And then slowly down the road, you get more and more annoyed at each other and, and things start getting tensed. And with the, with the female platoon they had, um, we heard a lot of stories. There was a lot of funny stuff that happened. I think one, one funny, funny moment was when we were cleaning our barracks. Um, they had around three ambulances called to our company and we didn't know what was going on. And the drill sergeants evacuated the entire company. And we were like, well, what's going on? We're just cleaning. And apparently one of the platoons in their barracks decided to mix their chemicals. They took pine saw and they took bleach. And when you mix chemicals, you, you, it literally says it on the, on the bottle not to mix it because it creates um, an ammonia gas that can knock you out. And what happened was that the entire uh, female comp uh, platoon, they started just passing out in their yeah. barracks. And we were just like, we didn't know what was going on. And we were surprised because we're, so the army doesn't really teach you how to clean. So we, we just kind of, you know, um, winged it. But we were surprised that, you know, like even we didn't do that. There was a lot of other funny moments. I know one moment. Uh, so we have this thing called fire guard where you have to wake up. You have to have two people on shift for every hour at night. So in front of your like barracks, um, just to, you know, 
just to simulate guarding in an actual uh, scenario. So I know I had like a two to three a.m. shift. And I woke the other guy up that was next, uh, that was next after me for the, his 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. shift. And I go back to bed and I'm like, okay, it's, it's all good. And next thing I know, it's like 3.30 in the morning and the drill starts yelling at us to wake up because uh, apparently that guy fell asleep on shift. And <laughs> it happens like we fall, it's because you're awake like 1 a.m. at night and you got to stand there in uniform, full uniform. And you just got to be awake and to simulate that you're doing a night shift. So he fell asleep. Drill sergeants were pissed. We were woken up at 3.30 in the morning and we had to clean the entire barracks. And then at 4 a.m. in the morning, we got to do some extra PT outside where we did, you know, lunges across the entire field. And I guess it, it, it sucks. And, you know, sometimes you get in fights. You're like, why, why, did, why didn't you just stay awake, you know, with your buddies? But at the end of the day, everyone makes a mistake. So you just kind of move on and um, it's pretty fun. Tell them the lizard thing. <laughs> oh yeah, we had so in field training, um, you don't really get access to good bathrooms. You get you know porta potties or porta johns that they call it. And at, at night, because it's in the field, you're in the middle of the woods. Um, there's not really access to light or anything, so you have these little headlamps. So um, I, I went to the I went to take you know uh, to the bathroom at night, and I'm in sitting in the porta john and it's pitch black because it's nighttime. There's no lights or anything. And I feel something across my feet. So I turn my headlamp down and it's a lizard like this. Big. <laughs> and I, I was just like, because we're still in full uniform. We, we don't take that off at, in the field. So we're just out there in full uniform. I told my buddy, and you always have to travel with a battle buddy. You can't be, uh, ever travel alone. So I told my buddy who's waiting outside. I was like, yo, you got to open the door. You know, there's a lizard in here. I'm going to kick it out. <laughs> and, and I kicked it out and it landed on him. And he, he was just, you know, flabbergasted. Like he was completely shocked too um there's a lot of fun stuff out there especially in south carolina the climate is different from minnesota so there are scorpions there are different you know bugs and critters that i've never seen before until i've been there and you know there was a lot of there's this one ant called a cow ant and it glows uh glows like bright orange and i've never seen that and i saw like a hundred of them crawling all over in the woods and i was like i was completely scared my, my buddies he lives in South Carolina and he was like, Oh, don't worry about them. They're just ants. And I was like, ants should not be glowing like that. You know, they should not be so big. So there's a lot of fun stuff that happened. Yeah. Those are some um, interesting stories you have there. I'm pretty sure you have much more. Um, Gaurav, if you don't have any questions, I think we have a couple in the chat. Okay. Should I just go through the, the chat questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So first question, what's your intelligence path or a target employers? So for my my goal in, after this contract is over is to switch to the FBI or um, continue down the Air Force line. So the FBI works pretty similarly. They have recruiters that you can talk to. Um, so once I'm nearing the end of the college um, graduation, once I get bachelor's and whatnot, I'll still be under contract for a couple of years in the army, but I can, you know, begin my path with the FBI, talk to the recruiters and they have Intel analyst positions in the FBI as well. They work a little differently and they have a bit of a different training, um, but it shouldn't be too bad to just switch over and uh, pursue that career. So that, that's the, that's the goal. If that doesn't work out, you know, I have, I could just continue and go active in the army. So instead I'm guard right now, I could just, you know, put in some form, go active and actually get deployed um, or stationed. And then if, uh, I, I have multiple like career, uh, paths right now, I'm not really, uh, stubborn or stuck, stuck to one right now. So I'm just keeping it open till I'm done with college. Okay. Uh, makes sense. Um, yeah. And who's your role model? Who do you really look up to? Who's my role model? Well, I have a lot of role models. I couldn't really say one. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, my parents are my like first role model, honestly, because uh, they moved here in a, um, you know, in a climate where like they're from India. When I came here, I was raised like most of my life as a kid from here. So being American, going through the American schooling system, having all these American friends, it was a lot more easier to me to like assimilate to the culture and everything. But for my parents, it probably was extremely difficult, um, but they still managed it. And, um, you know, they still found a way to like, grow and pursue and uh, enlarge their careers while in America, while being from India. So that, that's a big thing. So I look up to that. And uh, other than that, it's like, I guess I have a lot of um, 
role models like teachers and whatnot. I know when I was in the army, there was like drill sergeants that were our instructors. And I would look up to some of them because they, they were insanely like some of them were just fitness freaks. They would they would be able to like do these ruck marches and they would just be laughing and um, seem fine, not even tired. And I would look up to those people. But I guess, you know, role models are really situational. Just find something that fits your situation and fits your goal. And you look up to them um, to get that motivation. Yeah, so um, our next question, do you have any advice for someone in middle or even elementary school um, to plan for high school and college? Uh, yeah, so one thing I, I know from personal experience and a lot of people with, you know, uh, a lot of Indian friends I had is like, there is, you know, the practical side of things where, you, you know, your parents are like, you know, doctor, engineer, that kind of line. But there's also like passion. I think when you're in middle school, don't worry too much about, you know, like career. Cause you're, you're still what you're, you're a kid, like 14, 15. I only start really worrying when, even in college, like here, people still follow their passions, which is a great thing to do. But when you're in middle school and high school, you know, you got to enjoy what you want to enjoy. So if you like doing art, do a lot of it. If, if you, if you like doing, um, you know, engineering or music, you know, throw yourself into those places. Don't just back out because, it might not help you later in life because you might be missing out on some like enjoyable stuff that you could have been doing when you're a kid. So just, I would say stick with what you love doing um, and push yourself because don't, don't be not pushing yourself. So if you feel like an advanced class can be doable for you, then, then push yourself and take it. If you, if you feel like the regular class is enough of a challenge, then do that. You know, there's no, there's no right or wrong answer in this situation. You just want to do what you always want to keep challenging yourself, but also, making sure that you're able to actually complete the task to whatever kind of degree you want to complete it. Okay. Yeah. I think this definitely makes sense. Um, next question. Do you believe you ever fit, uh, you ever hit the physical energy threshold? Uh, so there are times where in the army that I did think um, I did hit it. And then I just kind of forgot about it and kept moving because it, it's like, there's this one, I don't know if it's true or not, but there's, there's this one theory where we only hit like 40% of our actual physical threshold. And then we have 60% left over in reserve. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but honestly, it, it is a mentality where I, I found it was true in the army. There are times where like we did um, a night infiltration course where we had to crawl around 300 meters is the target. And um, it's in full battle gear. You know, you have your vest on, you're crawling, you're crawling, you're crawling through as a dust and it's hard. And after a while, it's you, you, you're drained um, completely. And it's at 1 a.m. at night. We did it at 1 a.m. And this was after doing a, a one mile obstacle course and rucking and all of the days. You know, this is field training exercise for four days. So we've been exhausted. And now we have this at midnight. So there are times where you think you hit it, but your drill sergeant is going to be yelling in your ear, you know, trainee, you got to keep moving. And it, it's like, imagine like your parents yelling at you, you know, you're going to do it no matter how hard it is. And that's how I felt when I was there um, during training. I'm like, these drill sergeants is yelling at you to get things done. Even if you think you've hit that threshold, your body, you know, still does it because you're not going to say no, you're not going to quit right there because your body just won't allow it. So I do think there, you know, some people can hit those physical thresholds, but that's just a mental thing. Um, I don't ever think I actually hit my physical limit. I do think that some mental, like sometimes I was mentally, just uh, almost at the capacity, but physically, no. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah, can you tell us about your intelligence security um, clearance requirements if you're allowed to share them? Yeah, so for my MOS, it was, um, you do are, you are vetted for security clearance because Intel does require um, a certain level of clearance. And that's just, you know, an interview process with um, uh, the FBI did it with me and just depends on who, who does it with you. But it, it takes a, it takes longer depending on how much, you know, of a, I wouldn't say threat, but how interesting you are of a character. So me being born in India was actually a pretty big deal for my clearance um, because it, it, I am technically still a foreigner, even though I'm a U.S. citizen and been here for more than like 10 years, they still treat me like I, I'm born in India. So with the interview process, I was vetted for around like three hours where they, you know, made sure to get all my parents' jobs, all my 
um, uncles that live in India, my grandparents, they had to get everyone's names down, everything and whatever they do, all of that. Um, at the end of the day, though, it's it's pretty clear, you know, as long as, you know, you're, you're a pretty solid citizen, not too much interesting going on. It, it's just a security clearance. And honestly, I haven't really um, used much of that clearance. It's just for training purposes and um, like a, it's more of just a preparatory thing. If you ever need it, you have it. So. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, so do you have any, do you meditate or have a version of like army style preparation or something that also helps like, you know, you to keep yourself together, like your mental health, things like that? Yeah. So I've seen, you know, everyone has their own thing for me. I did, uh, do a lot of different things. You know, I was not much into praying and everything before I went to the army during training though. I, I did pray a little bit more than I used to. Um, and in, in training on Sundays for basic training, we get to go to church. And I took that opportunity. I'm not Christian, but I still went to church because that was the one place we had music. And since we can't have our phones, we can't listen to music. So all we can do is listen to that church music on Sundays. So everyone went, no matter what religion you were, just because there was a lot of music. And that was pretty fun. Um, it, it was like a break from that lifestyle. And the biggest mental health aspect of it is just the, you, you're kind of disconnected from the world. You, you don't have your phones with you and you're stuck in just that company area. Right. Um, so I didn't see, I didn't even get to get outside of our, you know, base, which was Fort Jackson. We didn't, we weren't allowed outside at all. And so all we were surrounded by was just a lot of army soldiers, all this army stuff and nothing else. We can't talk to our parents till Sunday. And we don't really get to hear the news and everything because they, they really want you to stay disconnected from whatever's going on in the world, um, which was a good and bad thing. And especially the mental health, it got real, a little hard at times, but everyone has their own way. Um, for me, I would just say, you know, a lot of meditation works for some people. For some people, it doesn't. Um, you know, I have a lot of friends, they would actually uh, order in the mail um, a lot of like music and everything. And they would, you know, sing songs. We would sing a lot of songs in the barracks. Uh, we would uh, do a lot of fun stuff just, you know, with our other guys when we were in the barracks and that just kept us going. Yeah. Um, and you day. are writing letters actually. So he was writing letters to home. They can able to write letters. So what he was doing is he was, whenever he gets a little bit of free time, he started writing letters page by page by page. Sometimes you will see 10 papers, pages of letter. Yeah. at one time so I, he was yeah, writing letters. i did write a lot so i think everyone writes a lot when you because can't talk on your yeah. phone so we were literally every night once we got back there was really nothing to do except just write so we got paper we have pencils and we just wrote exactly what was going on all day and i send it back home send it to our parents and uh, that was like the one thing we could mail to each other was just letters and um, i think you still have those letters right yes. yeah there's like a stack of letters that i sent <laughs> and my mom kept all of them and it's just uh you know it, it's great to have that i had a lot of friends what they would do is they'd have their parents send pictures um back to them so which was also really neat and um yeah communication is key mental health the, the biggest problem with the mental health aspect is just that communication is really limited you're only communicating with a couple guys every every day so and he started teaching uh prayers to other mm. people's too <laughs> i so yeah there, there was that too it's like a lot of people are interested because i'm indian and um they didn't have any other indians there so i was teaching a lot of different things about my culture and so which was really fun and unique so okay yeah um, so our next question is for the parents. So what's your advice for a young parent specifically for community college and university courses that Vasish took early? So um, before we came here, you know, we are the uh, first, like he's the first generation kid for us. So we do not know anything about American education system. All we did is Vasish we do not know, you do not know, and you are good at uh, researching than us. So why don't you just research yourself everything and come to us, discuss with us. So 100 and 150%, I will say, more than 100%, he did the whole research, how to study, what to study, and how from eighth grade onwards, I was behind him saying that, Mommy cannot help you because mommy doesn't know anything. But what I did is I did my own research as a parent as much as possible. And I was just discussing with him with his research. 
So we ended up, uh, like he came and he told me, mom, we can do this way. So there are like thousands of options. You have to choose what is right for you. And there is not, in the education system, there is nothing is bad. It's always like any education system, community college, if you take it, university college, if you take it, everything will give you some kind of benefit at the end. It is how you take that one. That is important for every parent it is. So we went to conferences, like uh, um, planning conferences, because he's our first kid. So we try to attend more than one conferences for the high school career pathways. So we, whatever we uh, learned from that, those conferences is, Everything is better than other, one or, one or the other like that. So if you go to university colleges, it may help you for career pathways or uh, saving some money like that, or you get some kind of scholarship in one college, you won't get another thing. But what he did was like, uh, he said PSEO. When he went there, he told me his other uh, mates also in other colleges, he was telling me, mom, with the, with a, a number of people who are under that school or university, it is less in the community colleges. Because it is less, I'm getting more time with my mentor. So yeah. he was explaining so, that to me. There's like a lot of benefits. Like my mom said, um, you know, everything is good. You just have to take it that way. So I did community college um, for dual enrollment my junior year. And then for my senior year, I went to the University of Minnesota. And I would honestly say like the community college experience I had was a lot better just because it was more focused you know one-on-one -on -one. there was the class sizes are a lot smaller um than it is a public university where there's like around 100 or 300 kids in one class so uh at the end of the day though both are great you know benefits to it um the university challenges you a bit more than a community college does just because it, it is you know less focused one-on-one -on -one and more self self-learning but yeah both help both were great and um what else? What part of that question was there? See, community college means me, 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 me. Community college to me, you are getting the same kind of degree. The only thing is, if you have a university degree, your uh, kind of kickstart will be better. You know, you can kickstart your career better. But after like four or five years of experience, nobody asks whether you passed out from community college or you passed out. Means when I say passed out, you like graduated from uh, university. Once you get that experience, then nothing matters. Your experience matters. But only thing is when you're kind of fresh in the school, people, I think in here in US, that's not that much also, you know. So if you're undergrad, nobody's going to pinpoint you like, have you graduated from like Harvard or have you graduated? Means if you are undergrad, you are undergrad, right? So I would say it only matters just because, just for the entry purposes. But once you have those two or three years of experience, um, I think that your experience counts. Yeah. Uh, nothing much of community or kind of, Thing and, like that. And you can also look at like what's given at these colleges. Exactly. Like, um, yeah. The university, what really helps at the university is they have these programs that they connect, they can connect you to these internships and these companies that community colleges don't actually have access to yes. that much. So yeah, you get like more communications, more networking that can be done at a bigger school. But at the end of the day, you know, you, you get you just gotta outweigh the costs and benefits of the situation. Like yeah. community college for some people, you know, if they want to be more financially responsible, they'll do community college and they'll switch. For me, I wanted to, you know, I saved a lot of money doing this because I got two years of college done in high school, which was free because the state paid for it. And then now for this next two years, the army's paying for it. So it's it's more of, a, you know, what do you want to get out of it? And yeah. so I wanted to get out of it without any debt while getting that degree as well. Yeah. So taking the classes at that community college, I took um, calculus and I took uh, uh, some physics courses and whatnot. Those physics and calc courses were the same. They, they transferred perfectly into my uh, university. So it's not like, you know, they're different courses or they're weighted differently. They, they're the same thing that you learn. It's just that the name on that transcript is just going to be from a different college. That's, that's all it is. And the, it's also situational sometimes if you see. So because he was trying to do the PSEO, the first option he saw is University of Minnesota offering it. Anoka County is offering it. Some other community college is offering it. The thing is, where you live, how much commute you can able to afford, it depends on how, whether the parents can able to sacrifice that driving distance. So it all depends on um, a situation, a lot of factors. So yeah. what he did was when he chose the community college, he wants to choose whether he can able to drive there. 
whether my parents able ha have the time to attend those classes to drop me there. So that's what he was looking for it. And uh, luckily, the Anoka County was not too far from my our house. That's why he chose that on the first instance. Then he came and told me, Mom, I want to go to my college, university. Can I also switch from Anoka to university because I want to have a feel before I go into the college as a college student? Mm -hmm. Then I said, it's up to you whether you, you want to able to maintain your academic level in the university after you're coming from community college, then go ahead. So. You have to see that those factors, your commute level, your driving uh, um, experience, all those things matters. And can you able to make the classes without any problem so that your stress and mental mental stress all will be you know balanced? So you have to think about that way. So yeah, I think there were some points that were very well pointed out there. Um, do we have any more questions, Aditi, Spurti, Gaurav, or any questions in the chat? Or is there anything that Vasish or um, uncle and auntie you guys want to talk about? Um, I would like to say one thing. So for every parents, when their kid comes and say, uh, you know, from their childhood onwards, they say, I want to become a doctor. I want to become an engineer. That is one stage. And when they want to decide and say, when he came to me and the first time he asked me, mom, I got the appointment with this military uh, national recruiter. guard recruiter as well as Air Force recruiter, and then another one, uh, Navy recruiter, three recruiters, he got it. I was like, uh, one thing as a nurse, yes, you can face challenges that is different, but I'm a mom, you know? I was a little bit shocked. Where it's come from? That's what I asked him first. Why you want to do this? You only told me do something different, and this is what I want to choose. And I got three recruiters. You just choose which one you want to be so I can go in that one. And you just talk to them. He just got the appointment time and date, everything to, for me. Yeah. All I need to do is go and talk to them. And I was like surprised to see uh, when he was like, at what age is that? 16. 16. Oh, yeah, I was 16. When he was 16 and I was like, um, I didn't bring, like brought him up that way. I don't know where it comes from. So he, the first thing he told me is, mom, you also do the service. I came to the, your hospital and I saw how you work. And that is not easy job. That's what he told me. So he saw somebody working and he felt it. If somebody is doing that way, why should not I do it? He, he like pointed that to me. Then I don't have any answer to tell him. I said, okay, I'll come see what we can do next. So I just... Uh, follow his path yeah. that day. <laughs> and one advice is don't get scared. There is nothing. It's all like fun thing, right? So you will get a lot of experience, which is, as I say, when you're, when you're into it, it's maybe a little tough, but you have, you'll have a lot of stories to tell to your friends and family when you come back out of this, any kind of training, you know? So as I said, it makes you mentally and physically strong. So it is good for your career yourself as human being it makes you a little humble also for others so i would say if you have intent if you have like some feeling that yeah i could do something just go ahead there is nothing to get scared you know so and every job has their own ups and downs it's yeah. not just national guard you know everywhere if you are a surgeon if you're a doctor you have to save the life so everywhere there is ups and downs it's how you take that yeah so like Fact. he chose intelligence so he may not be like taking gun and fighting the war right so he'll be let's say he's called for a war let's say there is a war happening so they will call him for intelligence let's say you are a nurse you choose nurse mos so they will call you as a nurse so you are not going to take gun and start fighting right mm -hmm. so don't get scared do what you want to do if you are interested <laughs> choose this it. path go but this it. will give you another path to go into military right you know so you whatever you can do in your civil lines like corporate world Similarly, you can do the same thing for military as well. And uh, one last thing, sorry. This one I just want to tell you guys because uh, this one really scared us. That's why I'm telling you, but he came out of it also. So one of the uh, field training he had one night, he was um, trying to go inside the tent. The tent is like one person inside. That's all. We, the tent is I, very small. I, I suffered a small injury. Injury, um, small accident. Actually. Yeah, an accident. And but yeah, it, accidents happen. There was always accidents, you know, in the army. Like we had daily, I think around three or four people would pass out because of the heat. 
Um, and so like, the amount of like ambulances that came in and out, it was just insane. So, yeah, but I did, you know, it was a freak accident, but I got over it. It, it was on my eye. It was an eye injury. And uh, at the moment I was like, you know, I, I didn't think this would happen to me of all people in the army, but it, it literally took like a week to recover. And uh, it just like showed me that, you know, our, our bodies are capable of a lot of. And he did not call things. his parents right away. Yeah. They, they asked me, I was at the hospital and they were like, do you want to call your parents? I was like, if I call my mom, she's going to fly down here. And I, I can't have that. I can't have my drill sergeants talk to my mom about it. So I waited till Sunday and I was like, no, I'm not going to call them at all. It's fine. Yeah. So. So I never thought that was she's just that strong. Yeah. That day, I really was like, oh, no, he's not my son. He's some someone else. <laughs> That's what I felt. So he is a strong person. He did not even call his mom. He did not cry. And if you see the picture of that one, it's not easy. But he came out of it. He recovered. Then he called me. Mom, my eyes is looking good, right? I had an injury. This is how he started yeah. telling me. <laughs> Anything else? Any other questions? Well, thanks for sharing all the stuff that's uh, been very uh, motivating. And uh, we, like, there's so many options. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's unique and lovely couch. Mainly our community, mostly IT, healthcare, the concentration on Sata. US uh, Air Force himself, but you know he's on a mission. So mm -hmm. I think like uh, like I only know two two people in the in the armed forces, right? Mm -hmm. So it's so unique. Illa also marino, babo vino, illa interest clean, illa mam jin kare vino, ang jukko chokar lavariya. So um, so they have their meaning to the katam vino me illa memory le vi kinoa rala. So jukko kya na vino aten kare ni himli babu time sabda. We just did like a, a quick uh, we just want to record this. Record Kerino, I mean, you know, share Keriba. Um, so Tunga Gagarechku, Chukusantosh towns, to review which is important. Like, I'm not the parents from Dino, Babuk Tunga Vino, the Grow Hotel, Miami Quick at Revino. It's like amazing. So, yeah. So, we need thanks. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's yeah, a good that, thing, yeah, to share with other people also the experience. So, yeah, I would say just go and at least talk once to the military guy, just to take ex don't join, but at least know what they offer, you know. So, that will give you some kind of knowledge. May, may not be you would be doing, maybe your kids in future, you will know that hey, I spoke to somebody like this, so they have this path. So, it's, it's, it's just gaining knowledge. So, just go and talk to them, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, is there any questions here, Spruti, Aditi, uh, additional questions? Well, I think Jumi, Jumi explained it to you. Um, yeah. So, Juku, thanks to me, Avataga. Um, any other final words uh, you guys have, Shruti or anyone else? Um, no, nothing to add on. Yeah, I think this is going to be the end of this. Thank you so much for this opportunity and for speaking. Yeah, no, thank you for having us. Yeah. yeah. yeah thank maybe. you kids. All the best for you guys future. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye.